We'll measure D. So let's look at our triangle. We have a D up here, a 28 here, and a 45 here. And I'm just going to go ahead and label E and F for you. Okay, so what we need to do first is, the step one, is decide which is our unknown angle. Well, D is where we're working from, okay? So from this reference angle, which two sides do we have? Well, this side over here is our opposite, and we're not using it, okay? We have the adjacent, and we have the hypotenuse. So which tri trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So we're going to use the cosine function. Okay, the cosine of what angle? We, we don't know the angle measure, so the cosine of D is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to put 28 over 45. Okay, so there's my first two steps. So let's go back and reference. Okay, we from the unknown angle, which was D, we need to decide which two sides we had, and we had adjacent hypotenuse, so we decided we were using the cosine function. Then we set it up. So here's our setup. Now we're going to actually solve it. Okay, to solve it, we're going to kind of set it up a little different this time. Remember, when we're looking for an angle, we're going to work backwards. So we're going to use our inverse button. Okay, so you can convert this to a decimal if you want, or we can just put the inverse of the fraction in also. So I'm going to show you both methods. So we're going to take cosine to the negative 1 um, of 28 40 over 45 okay that's the fractional way or if you like the decimals you can go into your calculator and do 28 divided by 45 and go ahead and get that decimal oh six point do, 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 repeating so you could also take the cosine the inverse of 0.6222 repeating it's really up to you okay I'm going to go ahead and clear this and go ahead and run through that. So I'm going to take a second function, second of my cosine to get that, and I'm going to put my fraction in. 20, whoops, 28 divided by 45. Okay, so there it is, and that means my angle is 51.5, or I would round that up to 52 degrees. So that means D is 52 degrees. And I figured out my angle, okay? So that's how you figure out the angle measure at D. Okay, let's try practice problem two. Okay, this time we're looking for angle K. So let's look at this one. Okay, K is over here. So I'm working from this angle over here. And I have 17 on this side and 23 on this side, okay? So from angle K, which two sides are these? Well, this one is the opposite, this one is the adjacent leg, and this one is the hypotenuse. Okay, we're not using opposite, we're using adjacent hypotenuse, so which one is this one? Again, this is cosine. So we're taking the cosine of angle K, and that is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so 17 over 23. So we're going to use our inverse button to work to look for the angle measure. So I'm going to take cosine to the negative 1, or the inverse cosine, of 17 20 thirds. And let's crank that out and see what our angle measure is. Grab your handy dandy calculator. Second function, cosine. Cosine to the negative 1, make sure that's in there, of 17 divided by 23. Close, equal. So my angle measure at K is 42.3, so I'll round it to the closest degree, which is 42 degrees. So angle K is 42. So that's 42 degrees, okay? So let's try 3. Problem 3. 
Again, if you didn't catch that, you can always pause and go back and rewatch this. Okay. This one we're looking for, let's say we're going to look for angle R. We have 9 here and 25 here. Okay, so here's our right angle. Which two sides do we have? This side and this side. Okay, from angle R, the 25 is our opposite and the 9 is our adjacent and we don't have uh, the hypotenuse. So which trig function uses opposite adjacent? That's tangent. So the tangent of R is equal to the opposite, or 25, over the adjacent, which is 9. And now we're going to use our trig, our inverse trig. So grab your calculators and take second tangent. You should get tangent to the negative 1. And this one is 25 divided by 9. And let's see what we get as our angle measure. 70.2. So it's 70 degrees. So angle R is 70 degrees. Okay, so that's how you figure that out. Now, let's take a second, stop, and think. If this angle is 70 and this angle is 90, what does it have force angle S over here to be? Well, we know that these two angles are acute, are uh, both acute angles, but they also add to 90. They're complementary. So this angle, we can just go ahead and say, well, if this one's 70, that one's 20, because these have a sum of 90. So you can go ahead and figure out those two sides. Okay? So that's how you find the inverse for your